Hello, my name is Ramya. I'm one of the academic coaches here at SNHU. Welcome to this video on Java classes and objects. In this video, we will see what are classes and objects and how to create a Java class and objects. Let's first try to understand what a class is and what objects are. In order to build something, it's useful to have a blueprint or a template. Using the blueprint of a house, we could build multiple houses. Similarly, using a design for a car or a cell phone, we could build many cars or cell phones. So we can create multiple objects from a blueprint or a template. In programming, we could do something similar. We could create a blueprint called a class and then make multiple objects or instances of the class. Let's consider a car. It has some attributes like the type, the number of doors, number of passengers, and the cost of the car. It could have some functionality or exhibit some behavior like drive, accelerate, or decelerate. In Java, a class is a blueprint or a template Classes have some properties or states or attributes. These would be the variables. The class could also have some behavior or functionality. These are the methods in the class. These methods help us do something. We can define the attributes and behavior of a class in a template and every object of this class will exhibit these. Let's consider a class called student. It has some attributes, name, age, and GPA. It has some methods, eat and sleep. We could create an object or instance of this class and call it Tom. This object Tom will have a name, age, and GPA associated with it. We could create another object called Tina, and there will be some values for the name, age, and GPA associated with Tina. So we can create multiple student objects or instances from this class student. And each of these objects will have a name, age, and GPA associated with it. Let's consider another example, a class called house. It has some attributes, city, state, bedrooms, bathrooms, and the value. It has a method, pay tax. I could create an object, call it home one, and home one will have some values for the state, the city, the bedrooms and bathrooms and the value. And all of these will be associated with home one. I could create another object, call it home two. And the values for the state, the city, bedrooms, bathrooms and value for home two will be associated with the object home two. Now let us see how we can create a class in Eclipse. Here I have a class called house. So the way you would create a class is we would say public class followed by the name of the class. And then all lines of code that go into this class have to be written within the set of squiggly brackets. So in this class, I have some variables, string city, string state, int bedrooms, int bathrooms, double value and double tax. I also have a method public void pay tax. And this method calculates the property tax on the house. So the tax equals 0 0.01 times the value. And then it's going to print out the value of the property tax. So this is just the template or the blueprint that we have created. Notice that we have not set any values to the variables because this is just a template. In the same package, I have another file in which I have a class, public class property. In here, I have a main method. You might already be familiar that the main method is the entry point into the Java program. And in the main method, we are going to create an object for the class house. Now you might already be familiar with something like this. 
int num equals 10. Here, I have a variable called num whose type is integer. So I write the type int followed by the variable name and I've assigned it a value 10. Now we are going to do something similar when we create an object. We are going to write uh, the type that's going to be the name of the class. So house followed by the reference to the class. In this case, our object name is going to be home one. And now we are going to use the new keyword to create the object. And we're going to write the name of the class followed by a set of parentheses. Now this line creates an object home one for the class house. Now let's set some values for the variables that we have in our class. So in our class, we have city, state, bedrooms, bathrooms, value and tax. I'm going to set the values for two variables, the city and the state. And we have to associate them with the object. So I'm going to say home one dot city equals Boston. Home one dot state equals Massachusetts. So I have created two variables city and state and they are associated with the object home one and the values are for the city it's Boston, for the state it's Massachusetts. Let's print this out. I'm going to write the object name. So I'm going to say object home one. This house is located in, and we have to print the city's name, but we have to say home one dot city. And I'm also going to print the state. So home one dot city. So we have to associate the variables with the object. So let's run this. See, it said object home one, this house is located in Boston, Massachusetts. Now let's create another object and let's create some uh, values for the variable city and state. So I'm going to call my other object as home two. And I'm going to say house home two equals new house. So we have created a reference to our class. So now let's set the values for city and state. I'm setting, I'm setting the city name as uh, Cambridge and state as Massachusetts. Now let's print out um, the details again. So my object now is home two. So I'm just going to change this line. So now we have object home two, this house is located in home two dot city and home two dot state. Now let's run this. So here you can see we have printed the details uh, for home one and home two. For home one, it says this house is located in Boston and for home two is located in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Now we can use these objects to also call the methods in the class. So in my house, um, class, we have a method called pay tax. So let's try and uh, call this method. We are again going to use the object name. Before we do that, we have to set some value for the house because uh, the tax needs to be calculated using the value. So I'm going to set home one dot value equal to, let's say 200,000. And using home one, 
I'm going to call the method pay tax so home one dot pay tax. So we have to use the object name followed by the method name. So now I should get uh, the value of the property tax that we need to pay for this home. So if I run this code, so you can see it not only prints uh, the location, now we have the property tax on this house is $2,000. So in this line, home1.paytax, we called the method pay tax. And here we have the method pay tax that calculates the value of the tax. That's 0 .01, 0.01 times the value and prints out the value of the tax. We can do this for home two as well. So I can set some value for the home. I can say home to dot value. Let's say we set it as 150,000. And we can do home to dot pay tax. And now we should see the tax value for the second home as well. So here you see the property tax for this house is $1,500. So depending on the object, the value of the variables changes. And when you associate the object with the methods, the methods print out the value of the tax for each of the houses. So when you say home1.pay tax, it accesses the method pay tax and calculates the tax for home one. Similarly, when we say home2.pay tax, it calculates the tax for home two. So in this video, we have seen how to create a class and how to create some objects. Thank you for watching this video. Please read this video's description for more resources.